Greetings, my deoxyribonucleic designers. Let's make the very building blocks of life. It can't be that hard, can it? As so many things start, we also start with a plane. I'm going to make it really narrow and really quite tall. Give it no segments on the width and lots and lots of segments on the height. I'm going to make sure it's popped on the Z axis instead. Now this long worm, we're going to add a twist deformer and we're going to spin that right up a lot by about somewhere in the thousands of degrees. And you know, already we got a kind of DNA looking structure, but we're going to make it even more DNA. I'm going to make myself a helix spline, set it to be quite narrow, five at both ends, and only make the height about 100. Pop that one along the ZY axis and move it along the X axis by 50 centimeters so it's centered in the scene. Next up, back to our plane. To that one, we add a spline wrap deformer. We'll put that after our twist. And then we reference the helix in that spline wrap and we get this beauty until we press it to work along the Y axis. And then we suddenly have ourselves a nice little double helix situation here. Look at that. And now this is a good time to do the first bit of animation. And that's easy is done with the helix. What I'm going to do is add a nice little spin to this. So I'm going to go to the coordinates, jump to the first frame and set a keyframe on the pitch rotation. Jump to the very end and set another keyframe at the pitch rotation for 360 degrees. And let's pop open our timeline with the dope sheet. Select both of those keyframes and press the L button. Now those are going to be linear and the animation looks a little something like this. And it also loops. Now the easiest way to add some nice geometry to this is just to put the whole thing inside of an atom array. Scale those down to something like 0.25, reasonable size, and suddenly we have our double helix DNA strand chain. And it still animates, but it doesn't look particularly good yet. So let's shade this boy two different ways, starting in redshift. I'll start with a new redshift material, which I'll add to the thing and go in there and create a Fresnel. And this is going to be a bit of a techie material. What I need to do is plug that Fresnel into the opacity, go into the material and set the emission to be high. And of course, we're going to make that slightly blue because this is the techie material after all. And just like that, we have ourselves a techie looking DNA strand that animates and looks techie. What about something a little bit more realistic? What about something that looks like it was taken with an electron microscope? Well, we duplicate the material, open that up, go into the Fresnel, change it from using the index of refraction to using the curve, set that curve to one so it's a little bit brighter. And of course, we need to add that material to our object, otherwise we can't see shit. And then we take that Fresnel and plug it into a ramp node straight into the Alt input. And then we stick that into the base color and we stick that into the emission color. And we unplug the Fresnel from the opacity. So now our ramp remaps the Fresnel to whatever colors we want. And we want the low lights to be slightly brighter. So I'll set those to 10% whiteness and that's going to lift the dark parts. And I'll change the emission from high down to something low, like 0.33. So now it both reacts a bit to light and has that peach fuzz electron microscope look. But it doesn't have much fuzz yet. And to add some, we want to make ourselves a Maxon noise. Take that Maxon noise, plug it into a displacement shader. And plug that displacement shader into the displacement output. Of course, that does nothing yet until we add a redshift tag to our atom array. Then we go into geometry, we override the geometry, enable tessellation so that one subdivides, and turn on displacement. Look at that, fuzzy. Let's knock that back a little bit, set the displacement to 0.25 instead. Go into the max on noise and change that to a slightly sharper one. I quite like the FBM but it's kind of tiny, so we need to go into input and change the overall scale to somewhere around 5 to get the right sense of scale. Now sometimes displacements get kind of confused with procedural objects, so let's throw this atom array into a connect object. 
and put these tags on top of that instead. And on the connect, we want to uncheck weld so it doesn't create any weird points. Ta-da, that looks kind of electron microscopy. Now, if you like, you can actually combine both of these by just adding the techie one on top. It adds a little techie glow on top of the electron microscope look. And now, of course, I'm going to show you a way to do this in standard render as well. And this one's set to physical, but the standard standard one should be very similar. It starts, as with so many things, a new material. Call that one techie. It's this. It's going to be the techie one. We'll add it to our connect object. And now this is literally the same process. Instead of opacity, you go into alpha and you create your Fresnel there as a texture. You make sure to sharpen that well up. Just make it really sharp. Then you just go into luminance. Turn that on and I guess make it slightly blue because we're still doing the sci-fi techie one. And again, for the electron microscope one, a very similar process. New material, call that electro micro and add that to our DNA stuff. And with the physical engine, to change the color, you go into reflectance and change the default diffuse. Otherwise, you just go into the color channel here. But in the reflectance diffuse, we add a texture, again, our Fresnel. In that darkest darks, we turn a little bit brighter all the way up to 25%. And then we just copy that texture, put it into luminance, paste it there, set it to multiply, and then turn down the brightness to around 50%. And now comes the displacement. Turn that on, pop ourselves a noise shader in the texture, get this lovely looking seashell, change that noise to FBM, and set that global scale to tiny, 5% and get this lovely pile of polygons. And then we just set the height really low by 0.4, and that does nothing until we turn on sub-polygon displacement, so turn on round geometry, and turn up our subdivision level. Now it's very squiggly, but if we change the type to intensity, that's gonna puff up the volume for us. And even in standard render, you can combine them to get a slightly different look. So that was one way to do the DNA. But what about the second way? Well, let's hide our DNA create ourselves a little cylinder, make it really skinny and quite short, pop that one into a cloner, set the cloner to use object mode, drag in the plane that we used as the reference, then change the distribution from surface to edge, check scale on edge, and set the edge scale to somewhere around 90%. Okay, so what does that give us? Well, it gives us this DNA strand, which looks kind of like the other one did, and that's made up of lots of tiny things. And the thing about things is that things can be anything. It can be just simple cylinders, but if you replace that simple cylinder with say a bone or a flower or actual molecules, it still forms that DNA structure thing. And this thingy, when it's made of things, you can really have some fun with. For instance, let's add an effector to this, starting with a random one and it just scatters these all over the place. So we reduce the amount of position randomness, turn on rotation, set that to about 360 for all of them, and then add ourselves a field to that linear one and make it a bit smaller. Now, if we move that field forwards and backwards, we can animate the DNA on. So let's do that. Let's set the linear field to minus 80 to begin with at the very start of the scene, jump to the end of the scene and set it to plus 80. And now we see that these things that make up the DNA chain animate into their positions quite nicely. And if we add a plane effector to that cloner, change it from affecting the position to just affecting the scale, setting it to uniform, set it to minus, but not minus one, because that can really annoy uh, displacement and stuff sometimes, but instead set it to minus 0.999. And then under fields, we add that same field that we had play that through and we see that the whole thing scales out of nothing and animates on. We're also getting a little bit of color from that field. Quite nice. And for a tiny little cherry on top, let's add a delay effector to that. Set it to still use blend and maybe 75% to just smooth the whole animation out. Or set it to spring if you want to make it jiggle. For sure. As I said, these things that are making up the DNA chain can literally be anything. 
For the more realistic slash molecule one, I made a molecule-like shape. I turned the edges of the plane into a spline, keeping that spline as a child, making sure it was still affected by the deformers, and I cloned that molecule onto that spline. For the digital DNA, I animated this techie texture in After Effects, two fractal noises, the mosaic effect, a colorizer, a grid on top of that, and, of course, offsetting the RGB channels. I smacked that onto some cylinders and cloned those cylinders onto the DNA plane. Also, what I'm going to do is start giving away these kind of teaser video scene files on my Patreon as well. I obviously want to make these look sweet, so I usually give them a lot more love than I can fit neatly into a tutorial. Sometimes I'll have to use assets that I haven't made completely myself, so I can't give those specific assets away. I'll chuck in placeholders for those little bits. But the files for both of these babies are available in their complete form. C4D, comps and all, except for some of these tiny particles. So, Tuto peeps get early access. True peeps get that and tutorial source files. And Titan peeps get all of that and teaser source files. And a bunch of other things too. And you all have my undying gratitude. Stay in deoxyribidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibidibid